everybody and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. We are so glad you are joining us here today. We have a special event going on as you probably well are well aware of. Um, since Monday, Caitlin has been doing a DIY stitch marker event right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Um, each day we are coming to you live, showing you a different way to make stitch markers and have a good time doing it. Um, Caitlin, for those of you who do not know, she is my partner in crime here at MarleyBird.com and she is an avid jewelry maker. She does a lot of jewelry classes with Annie's does videos for their YouTube channel, correct? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, attends a lot of different conferences. Like she's just, she's all jewelry, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty awesome because as you guys know, I'm such a novice, but I really enjoy that end of the craft world. And it is a huge escape for me. So having Caitlin on my team and have her be able and having her be able to show me different things and how to make fun jewelry for my knitting and crochet is, it is super exciting. Then to have my other friend Meredith joining us today from Beadalon is even more exciting. So we get to talk about some fun tools, some fun techniques, and get to some talk to some fun people. So while I am getting everything set up here on YouTube to get the links provided for you in the video description box below, why don't you guys go ahead, smash that like button, make sure you have hit subscribe, and I'm going to hand it over to Meredith and Caitlin and let them do some talk in and stuff and uh, describe what's going to happen today. Hey everybody, so glad to have you back. What, we're day three, right? Today's Wednesday. Yeah, I don't, you know, <laughs> it all just blends together. But welcome to day three. We're so excited to have you here again today with us and even more excited to have Meredith from Beetle on here. And so we're talking about different ways of making stitch markers and we're going to talk about some wire uh, today and how to make it. But the biggest reason that we have Meredith on is because she's gonna teach us something really cool today. And we've been talking about jump rings and how we use them to connect our stitch markers um, to our projects. You can make your own stitch markers. Um, we've talked about like what size you would need and what happens like if you don't have the right size. Well, now you can make them yourself and you never have to worry about it. So Meredith is here jump, to show us that. Jump rings, right? What? Jump rings? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. You said stitch markers. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, no, jump, rings. Your own jump rings. Yeah. We all knew what she meant. Well, we are doing we are doing make your own stitch markers too. So it all goes together. Anyway, um, just a little housekeeping in case you don't know. There's a blog post all about this with what every day is. And there you'll be able to click a link. I Marley, I think put it down in the description here um, or in the comments and you can go there, you can see what every day is. And then you'll also find a link to the previous days so you can watch the video again. You'll also find this handy little calendar that shows you everything that's going on. Today is the fifth and we have our Contastic Stitch Markers. So let's get started. I'm going to switch over here to my phone so you guys can see down. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, hold on. I got a mute things. Okay, there we go. Now I don't hear an echo. Does anybody else hear an echo? Okay. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be using this tool and this is called a cone-tastic. And this is from Beetleon, and it's not supposed to make stitch markers, but that's what we're doing. Um, it makes these really awesome cones here that we would use in jewelry making to top off a necklace or a bracelet, right? Is there a better way to describe it? Um, so for the contastic, yeah, um, jewelry making cones. I mean, we use them for all different kinds of things. Caitlin, you've actually done some really cool projects on the beetle on Facebook Live using that. Um, and we have all- I think Marley friends, has um, hers. Her bracelet, Matt Marley yeah. Has her. <laughs> oh, yay. Thank oh, you. that's my favorite. I love that one. I that was um, the crochet, right? And then we finished yes. off the ends with the, the yes. cones. Yeah, nice. I love it. So yeah, you can use it for all different kinds of decorative purposes and you can actually um, well, we'll talk more about jump rings later on, but you can use those mandrels to make jump rings as well. 
Ooh, super exciting. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but it comes with three mandrels inside and then you can get a bunch extra, which we can talk about then if we want to, but that's the tool that we're going to use today. So this is a cone-tastic mandrel. Well, is it, it's just a cone-tastic, right? Correct. The tool is called okay. the Contastic, and then it comes with the three different sizes of mandrels with it. Um, and as, like you were saying, Caitlin, um, we have three and now four actually um, different accessory packs. Um, and I can, do you want me to show them just real quick? Sure, if you want to. Okay, perfect. I'm going to just come down here and um, just show. So there are inverted mandrels also. Um, and then hourglass shaped mandrels. And then um, we just, I don't unfortunately have any with me, but we have rounded ones as well. I'm excited about those. I know, I know you've been wanting some for so long. <laughs> well, with the, with the shutdown and with all the delays and shipment, unfortunately we haven't yeah. got them in stock yet. But the minute we do, I promise they're coming your way. I promise. <laughs> I can't okay. even get extras for me. I have an original set. Oh man. Well, that's okay. We're not using those today anyway. Ooh, let me get Perfect. some of this stuff. I didn't see that in before. Guys, that's for another day. Sorry. Preview, right? Um, anyway, <laughs> so let's get started on our Contastic stitch markers. And then we'll talk about jump rings when we get to that, if that's okay with you, Meredith. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so what we're going to use for this is I have some 20 gauge artistic wire. And you can use up to 18 gauge, right, Meredith? Um, when you're using your mandrels, I prefer 20 gauge for this project. It's a little softer, easier to manage. I'll use, I'll use um, 20, 18 gauge just because okay. I grabbed the 18 gauge box. Um, so, well, you do it with 20, I'll do it with 18 and then we'll Perfect. see the difference. And I'm using a purple color, but the cool That's thing right. about artistic wire is it's coated, right, with a color. So it's coated with it's color and it has a copper core. So mm -hmm. it's a copper core and then it's coated um, with it's an enamel color coating. And then on top of the enamel color coating is a tarnished resistant coating. So there are a couple of colors that don't have that tarnished resistant coating that are um, meant to patina naturally. But for the one that you're using today, Caitlin, and the one that I'm using, um, see, I'm using rose gold, you're using purple. Yes. Um, there's copper, co copper core, dead soft wire for those of you who know about what those things mean. Um, and then it's enamel coated with a tarnish resistant coating on top. Yeah, and you would be amazed at how many different colors of this you can get. There are so many different ones. You really can do so many different things. Um, here you can see I have, I think this is teal. I don't remember exactly what it's called. And I have a rose for later to do our stitch markers. But I mean, you can get every different color that you could imagine to be able to do your projects. So I really love the artistic wire um, to do projects on, especially stitch markers. Um, jewelry wise, I usually stick to like gold and silver, but when it comes to like stitch markers and other really fun things, I love all the colors out there. Okay. Did you match so, your nails on purpose? I did not, but look at that. <laughs> okay, yes, I did it on purpose. So we're just gonna go with that, okay? <laughs> You're so um, type A, you would totally do that. <laughs> I would, but I didn't even think about, I just love purple, okay? And teal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as you can see, those are like my colors. Um, so you're also going to need a chain nose plier and you're going to need a cutter. And I'm also going to be using a nylon jaw plier. And I'm using these two tools here because I'm going to make my own head pin because why buy it when I can make it myself, right? That's what we're all oh, about I'm here today. I'm to see how you make yours, Caitlin. I know. So this, the technique I learned from Meredith. So <laughs> we'll show you that in just a minute. Are you doing the knotted ones? This. I am. That's what Nine, I did eight, here on eight, both eight. of those. Nice. So, okay. So how, let me show you how simple it is to use your Contastic, guys. I mean, it's this simple. So I put my mandrel right here in the top and you use an Allen wrench to go ahead and loosen it up so that you can stick it in and then you tighten it back up. I'm using the smallest mandrel here. There are three sizes. So this purple one is the smallest and the teal one I did on the medium. And then there's one size larger as well. If you really wanted to do that, you certainly could. 
So I know I do this different than how Meredith does it, but that's okay. So you're going to see two different ways to wind your cone, but you stick your wire right here through your hole. And I just bend mine over to lock it into place. And I'm right-handed. And I like to use my right hand to guide my wire. And I think Meredith, you use your left hand to guide your wire. And you're also right-handed, right? I'm, I'm uh -oh. being oh. asked to unmute, sorry. So I, I hold it in my right hand and I guide it with my left. And so I'm you're the opposite. You do it differently? Yes. Uh -huh. That's, but you we're, know what? That works we're both for you. Right handed. And awesomely, I can't, I don't have an Allen wrench. Um, so I'm not oh. sure that I'm going to be playing along. Here, with you I'll, at I'll all. hand you mine to use. <laughs> here, you know I'm going to look over here. Usually I can, I can find on my, my bench of tricks everything that I need. So hopefully I have an Allen wrench over here. If not, okay. Well, well, while she, looks for her, yeah, while she looks for it, I'm going to show you how to get started. So I stuck my wire through the hole here at the base of the mandrel, which they all have at the base of the mandrel. And I just bent it over to lock it into place. And now I'm going to just turn the mandrel and I'm going to wind the wire around. And I'm using my thumb so that when I get around to the start, I'm keeping the wire directly on top to make a really nice coil. See how that's coming out? And I just keep turning with my left hand, holding with my right until I get, oops, sorry guys, let it get slipped away. Until I get all the way up my mandrel. I mean, it's that easy. You just hold on to your wire, twist, Except I can't, I can't, I have to focus on what I'm doing. I keep looking up to make sure I'm in the frame and then I get a gap in my thing, but that's okay. We can squish it back together then. Um, and I'm leaving my wire on the spool. Normally I would like let this hang so it can keep unraveling, but then it makes a lot of noise. So I'm just going all the way up and then you could stop wherever you wanted to on your mandrel if you don't want it to go as high or as long, you could stop it, but I'm gonna stop right here and I'm just holding it in place. And I'm gonna take my cutters and I'm gonna come right up here, snipping off my wire and letting it go. It's not gonna fall off. And then I come down here and I snip this off of my tool and there we go. Now I have this really cool cone that is typically used for making jewelry on the end of your bracelets or necklaces. And where my gaps are, I'm just kind of twisting it together. And then from there, I always take my chain nose plier because you can see here how it's kind of sticking up a little bit from where I cut it. I'm just gonna grab that with my chain nose plier and bend it in just a tad so that it gets more rounded and into shape. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here at the bottom, just tucking it in a little bit. So now I have my cone. How easy was that? And then if you wanted to, you could cut this. If you don't want it to be as long, you could do that or whatever else. But so that is the basic shape of what we're using to make this. So Caitlin, can I show it a slightly different way? Yes. Doing that? Um, because what I found with the Contastic is that um, and, and really with most jewelry making, and I, I dabble in knitting and crocheting, but I'm definitely a jewelry maker first and a fiber artist second, um, but I love it. And I love learning new things and I love watching you guys um, with all of your amazing techniques. But with the contastic, like many things in jewelry making, and I imagine many things in knitting also, um, there are different ways of doing things. So let me show you, um, how I, how I teach it, which is just a little, little bit different. Um, so Kaylin, you are saying that you hold it in your left hand, correct? Yes. Okay, and so I hold it in my right hand. And the way that I do it is I hold it horizontally. You are holding it a little bit more vertically. I always hold mine horizontally. So I also have my, the smallest mandrel in. 
and I'm going to put the, um, the wire right in the center, just the same way you did. And the way that Sandra Lupo, who actually invented this tool, does it, she says to give your wrist just a little flick to lock that wire in place. It helps get it started just in kind of the perfect place for, um, for making that cone. And then what I do is again, horizontally, I hold it in place with my thumb and I press the wire against the mandrel. So I am rotating with my right hand and I'm pressing it against the mandrel with my index finger here and my thumb here. So I, I and I'm also using 18 gauge wire, so it's gonna look a little bit different than what Caitlin had, um, had done. But I find, I find for me at least, the horizontal holding and the pushing of the wire onto the mandrel for me makes a really nice tight coil. So again, just different ways of accomplishing the same thing. But for someone who is maybe doesn't like my technique, um, Caitlin's is the way to go. Or if you're kind of struggling with getting a nice tight coil, um, using it with in the opposite hands and vertically. I just always want to show kind of how, um, you know, just different variations to make sure that people can, can get a nice coil from the tool. Exactly. It's just like holding pencil grip versus knife grip or English versus continental. There's more than one way to do it. Um, and it's just what's comfortable with you. And also with Meredith using a thicker gauge of a wire. Um, so let's just break this down. In knitting and crochet, your yarn goes, the thinnest is a zero and then it works its way up. And as you get to a bulky weight, you go up in number. And um, with wire, the bigger the number, the smaller the wire is. So here I'm using an 18, or excuse me, a 20 gauge. And so Meredith is using 18. So her wire is actually thicker than mine. Um, so it will make a difference in how easy or hard it is to, oh, sorry guys, to roll your wire. Um, so just something else to think about. But yeah, it's always great to learn a different way to do it because something that works for me doesn't work for everybody else. So did you show how to, to take it off? Yes, but you can go ahead and show it. Maybe you do it different than I do. I don't, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of universal. Um, but I just, I, you want to make sure that you cut um, with the flush part of your flush cutters. Um, and this one is great because you can just, oops, you can just pull it right off. And then you have your cute little cone there. And let's just say, since you brought up the flush side of the flush cutter, when you look at your cutter, you'll see that this side is angled in. So it's like your beveled side. And then the back side is usually flat. That's your flush side. And you want that side to be toward, towards the side of your piece and let this indented side be towards your wire because it'll give you a nicer finished edge on your piece. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and be able to add something to the top to join to your jump ring and also add a little decoration to your piece. So I've got a couple beads here. I don't know which one I wanna use. We're gonna just play around as I go through this, see which one I like. And here you can see um, we have what's called a head pin right here at the end and that's holding my bead on. And this is a knotted head pin and I made it myself. Uh, I learned how to do this with Meredith. <laughs> so we're going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take still my 18 gauge wire, or excuse me, 20. I keep saying 18 because that's what you're using. Right, and I'm just, I'm going to try and make it so it goes on your view, but it keeps clicking over to Meredith. So hold on. I'm going to, so now talk Caitlin. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but I don't know why it's, it's like, maybe it's pin. Oh, it's because Meredith was pinned. Sorry. Okay. I have to be smarter than the technology. All right. Now talk, Caitlin. It'll be on your hands. Okay. So I took a piece of wire here. Um, I don't know. This is probably three, uh, four inches or so, but it doesn't have to be this long. I'm just doing it because it's easier when it's bigger, when I'm trying to do things on the camera. Oh, and I kind of need these pliers. Good thing I put them all over here. Sorry, guys. You also need a um, round nose pliers to be able to do this. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers. 
and Meredith, you'll have to tell me if you do this differently, because I might have just kind of made this up as I go on how we fudged it all together. Um, but again, it's all about the technique and then finding the way that works best for you. So I'm pinching it right here at the tippy tippy top of my pliers. And I like to rotate away from myself. So I'm rotating around, turning my wrist, coming back, rotating around again. And this time I'm making sure the wire goes below where I just was and I go around two times. So that when I come back, I have two loops, just like that. Now I'm done with those pliers. Okay, so my wire is coming off my right side. So I want it to go in from the left to make a closed loop. And I just curl my wire around and stick it through. And I pull it tight, I guess you would say, but that's about as good as I can get it with my hands. So that's where my nylon jaw pliers comes in. I grab it right here. So it won't mar my metal or put a mark in it because it's nylon. I grab my chain nose pliers, grab the end and I pull really hard and it cinches it up. Well, let's focus right there. It cinches it up and gives me a nice little knot on the end. Except that one, hold on. I gotta get it, pull it just a little tighter. It's gonna bother me. <laughs> is that how you do yours Meredith oh she's on mute Meredith you're on mute me don't mute me here I am I oh. know <laughs> um, that's 100 how I do mine now I, I'll be curious to see where where you go with the rest of that 22 gauge wire because I would definitely recommend for people who are doing that technique for the first time to do it with 24 gauge wire. 22 is a little, a little, um, a little thick um, for getting that, that knot nice and tight. Like you were just saying, like you really were, were working on it. If you yeah. use 24 gauge wire, you should not have any problems at all. Okay. Now, here's a question. If somebody didn't want to make their own head pin and I mean, you can just buy them, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. And when you buy your own head pin, the only, or the biggest consideration is you need to look at the size of the hole. Can you see the size of the hole there on my bead? Maybe that's not a good one. Here's another bead. Um, you need to look at the size of the hole because your head pin, if it's too small, it'll fall right through your hole and then it won't work. But all so. you need to do to um, alleviate that problem is just use a size 11 feet bead. Just like a little, a little True. Seed. Yep. And that would be putting yeah, the size the 11 C bead here on the end of your head pin and then putting your bead on and then it won't fall off the end. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to try this little drop bead and I'm just going to string it on to my wire and I'm going to take my wire and string it through my cone. And now I've got a little that is so cool. Stopper or whatever you want to call it. So why are you tucked in? It is tucked in enough so it's not going to snag somebody's knitting or crochet, right? Down here? Anywhere, anywhere that you Yes, need. yes. You would need you want to turn it in just enough so that it's not poking out because just like you wouldn't want to wear something with jewelry that's poking you. You don't want it on your knitting or crochet either. Right? Love it. I, I fell behind Caitlin and I got to catch up. Okay. I love it. It's so cool. All right. So let me come over here and see if there's any, everybody's like just mesmerized. There's not a whole lot of questions today. They're like, wow, this is so cool. Um, so we have a lot of people saying hello from all around the world. So hello, everybody. And yeah, not a whole lot of questions. They want to see you do that again, though, Caitlin. They want to see you make another head pin. Um, okay. We'll, we'll finish this off and then I'll do another one. Cool. Um, and Michelle Sanders says she loves hearing all of these cool ideas. And I think one thing that we can talk about as you're finishing this off, I mean, we're talking about using these as stitch markers, but there are so many different ways to use what you're making today. So maybe you can give them ideas of what that would be as well. Sure. I should have brought up my necklace that I made with it. Oh, well. Um, yes, you could turn them into earrings. There's so many different <laughs> things you can do. But anyway. Oh, sorry guys. Okay, so now once I have everything on, I need to make a connector at the top to be able to put my jump ring on. So how I do that is I put my round nose pliers right up here and I'm gonna do mine so that there's a space here because I like to do a wrapped loop 
I don't know, it makes me feel more secure and it's not as fiddly because usually when I do a non, just like a basic simple loop, I always cut my wire too long, too short. And then I got to go back anyway. So who cares? This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I take it in my pliers like this and I'm going to fold it over the back. I rotate my pliers up and I fold it over the top all the way down. I rotate my pliers back up and finish my circle. So now I have a full circle at the top with a little bit of space. I then grab my chain nose pliers and I use that to hold on to my loop and I just wrap my wire around. Oops, sorry, out of the frame. And the cool thing about this is that I can be as messy or as neat as I want to. And it also ties right into the top of my cone. So it's less noticeable where my cone ends and my wire starts because I'm using the same color. And then I'm just gonna snip this off really close. Always hold the end of your wire so it doesn't fly in your eyes or your friend's eyes. And there you have your stitch marker. That is just so like cool. That. Those are so fun. Thanks. Actually, I gotta tuck in this end. If you can see this, it's like sticking out a little bit. So I'm just gonna yeah. come in here with my chain nose pliers and now see, push so it I'm gonna be in. completely honest. Like wrapping that around willy nilly would drive me insane. Like it would have to be absolutely perfectly wrapped around. Well, you can see here I did it way more precise. Yeah, like that's that would but have to be. I'm, I also did this one where I could hold it right up in front of my face and not have like a phone in between what Are I'm you doing. You, you can't just do it like way over here with the phone no. in front of you? So oh. I'm not that yes. skilled. Skills. Skills. But I think I did pretty good for I love it. not having I it right up there. I think we ask the expert because we do have the expert jewelry maker here. There you um, go, Meredith. What do you think about all that, Meredith? I love it. I, I love Caitlin's technique. She's a, she's a pretty expert jewelry maker in her oh, own way. <laughs> um, and I love that you showed also Caitlin the one that has the um the bicone at the top of it generally yes. when I make um anything with really any necklace cone at all whether it's something that I've made myself with a contastic or if I've just used um a necklace cone that's pre-made um I will always put a bicone at the top of it it cinches everything up nice and tight like Marley was saying um just to to really um emphasize the precision of it. I'm also a very precise loop, wrapped loop maker, but I, I like to give people the freedom and the permission and the grace to have messy loops, especially if someone is just new to this technique. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, it takes a lot of practice and I've taught a lot of people how to make simple loops and wrapped loops and it can get really frustrating. Um, and the reason why Caitlin's was so good and the reason why mine would be so good is because I've been doing this for years. So especially for all of your viewers, um, Marley and Caitlin, who are our fire artists, um, who might not necessarily know what all of these tools are, or, you know, easily be able to distinguish a chain nose plier from a round nose plier, um, a little grace for a messy loop. Um, but know that practice, practice, practice to get that perfect loop in there because we'll all be right. expecting it. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Caitlin to hold up the stitch marker you're talking about because you're using the term bicone and like I'm like yeah what that means so what Mary I'm, is... I'm really ridiculous I love all the things I just don't know the name <laughs> I'm like that doohickey over there that thingamabob yep that's what I like <laughs> so Meredith is talking about this up here oh the bead. yeah so but the shape of it is called well, this is actually not a bicone. It's a rondelle, but it kind of looks like a bicone. But anyway, you know, I'm looking for a bicone here also. It's a bead at the top. And oh. so I put the bead on the top of this one because it's a larger um, cone. The hole at the top was larger. Where these cones, you can see like you don't even notice the difference of where the cone is and the wire is. So I didn't need to do one at the top. But Meredith is also talking about whenever you use a bead cap. So like we use this cap on Monday to do the leather tassel. And then I stuck the bead on top just to kind of make it really finished looking. That's exactly what she's talking about. So no matter what like bead cap or bead cone. So the difference is this is a cone shape. This is not a cone shape. Same thing, different words. 
it always finishes it off really nicely when you put a little bead with it. And so. who doesn't want a little more sparkle? Gotta have a little more bling bling. Yes. Well, and even if you don't use bling, like this one here, this is like a very, uh, it's not matte, but there's really no sparkle to it. Um, but you know, it still just finishes it off really nice if you're not a sparkle person. So what is that other marker over there? Yeah, so this one is actually my cone, but because when I did it, I wasn't paying attention. I got a little bit of space between it. And I said, well, I don't want to just throw this away, but it's like not pretty enough to be usable. So I just laid it down and I hammered it and it just flattened out my cone. And then it gave me a different look with what that's I'm doing. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's really awesome. So you don't have to throw things away if it's not perfect. Just find something else to do with it, especially like hit anything with a hammer and jewelry. Okay, not anything. But a lot of things, hit it with a hammer and it makes it really cool. You can okay. fix a lot of mistakes with a hammer. You can make a lot of mistakes with yes. a hammer, but you can definitely fix a lot of mistakes with a hammer. Yes. So on, on day one, when we did the leather tassel stitch marker and you use the cone, the, the bead cap, or I don't know what you called it. Yes. Is it possible somebody could make one of these cones and use that instead? On, Yes. Like they could, so this is a way to like combine both of those things. Yes. So you'd have to use um, at least the large cone, um, but you'd have to play around with it because the diameter of what you wrap your tassel at would have to be able to fit inside the cone. And then you could do exactly the same thing, except, I mean, you could still put glue on it, but instead of using this cap, you would just put your cone right on top and do exactly the same thing we did on Monday. Cool. I'm just trying to think of how people could get all the tools and how they could combine all yep. the things that you're teaching them what to do. Exactly. So once they have their, their stitch marker made, now they have jump rings that they need to do. And then of course you're going to have the crocheters who are like, well, that's not going to work for crochet. And so you have to talk about how it works for them. So I'm going to lead it back to you. We do have a couple questions in the comments or a couple comments. Do you want me to let you know those now? Sure, go ahead. All right, so uh, people are excited about the colors of the artistic wire. Uh, they they love the idea of being able to use many different colors. They love the, uh, the idea of a blue. Um, Deb is saying that the wire she would use would depend on what color bead she was going to match mm -hmm. it all up with. Um, Michelle Sanders says, all of this doesn't seem too difficult once um, I have the idea to be creative like that. So, I mean, I think that's half the, the battle. Don't you think, Meredith? Like, I think... I mean, I know for me, when I first became a knitter or crocheter, I went and bought all the things, right? I was like, I want all the things. I want all the books. I want all the tools. I can't even tell you how many like cable needles, like those little cable, like I had, but I was like, I don't know what they're used for, but I got to have them because they were, so I feel the same way with jewelry making. Like I get all the tools. I get all the stuff. I have all the beads. I have so many beads, right? <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I just at the, at the local craft stores because it's just, I'm, that's where I'm shopping. And there's something about just having it all here, the creativity that just kind of pops in, even if I don't know what I'm doing and I feel like I'm a bumbling idiot and I'm asking, I'm asking my expert friends, Hey, what's this thing? I'm a Bob, but I still have a great time doing it. I mean, I think that that's just it. You have to step away of this fear of, Oh, these are tools. You don't know. These are things you don't know. And just dive in. And that's what, I mean, that's what we're, we're all creative types. And I think that at least I'll speak for myself. I love lear learning new things. So even if I don't necessarily know how to do the technique, I'll play around with it. And nine times out of 10, I will, I'll get it. That one time that I get super frustrated, I'll put it away and I'll come back to it. Um, but I mean, that's, that's what I love to do. That's why I love crafting is yeah. because I see something that somebody has made and I want to make that. Yeah. And usually I want to figure out how to make that myself because that's my joy. That's the joy in my journey. Not everybody is like that. Some people want to want to know and follow the instructions. My joy is figuring it out. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many things in any craft that you're doing. Um, you don't necessarily need all of these tools or you know, there, there are different ways of achieving the same result, but I think the end result is having a really cool stitch marker to use when you're doing your knitting Absolutely. or a row counter when you're doing your crochet. See what I did there? Yeah. I know a little bit. I know a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> All right. Just enough to be dangerous. I know, right? I do want to just point out 
Oh man, I'm hearing echoing again, maybe because I have these in. Um, <laughs> I just want to point out that, you know, we always talk about like swatching and things like that and how people don't always want to do swatches. But this is like the same <laughs> thing with making these cones. You sit down and you play with it and you practice making your cone and then you have a ton of them. And so what do I do with it? Now I make stitch markers and then you get better and you get better and then you can use them for other things as well. Yeah, the techniques are the same. We're just, you, we're just applying them for for a different purpose rather than making them as dangles or as earrings or as um, a keychain or as you know a charm from a bracelet we're doing them with stitch markers i love it i love the crossover of crafts and marley it's so funny because you, i bet you go to a, a store like michael's or hobby lobby or joanne's and you start in the yarn aisle and you probably kind of meander your way back over and end in jewelry Mm -hmm. I'm exactly the opposite. I start in jewelry and then I meander my way down to yep. yarn. You just described my morning. <laughs> like that's what it was. <laughs> and that was my yesterday. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's totally how it goes. So it's funny. We have Jen Milano says, this is so fun. Before I was more into crochet, I made a lot of jewelry. I never thought about combining the two. This is so cool. And Samantha mm -hmm. Hansen says, I may have to raid my mom's jewelry making box. Ha ha. All right, so let's go on to the next step because we're not done and Meredith has some fun things to show us. Yeah, so um, we wanted to talk about making jump rings, right? So Caitlin, you, you start and segue me in. Sure, so once we get done with our cone and we've added our bead, now we need to add a jump ring to the top. And it doesn't matter if you're a knitter or crocheter, you need to add a jump ring here so that we can connect it to something else. Um, in this case, I just have a jump ring because this I would use for knitting, um, but we've talked about already, oops, using either a lobster clasp to connect to crochet or even using one of these lever um, earring hooks that you could hook onto your crochet or throw on a knitting needle as well. But you still need a jump ring to connect these to your piece. And when you go out and shopping, it can be very intimidating with how many jump rings there are. So Meredith is here to show us how we can make our own jump rings and always have the perfect color and the perfect size. Because if I want to, I can make a jump ring with purple and have this all purple. So first of all, those fishy beads are adorable. <laughs> They're so stinking cute. I love them. Thank so you. Now, I, when, go ahead. To explain to me, the beater, how do you use a stitch marker? <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me grab it. Okay. Because that, that's going to inform my, um, inform my, look, look at you two. <laughs> Pulling out your knitting. I love it. <laughs> Marley, you're muted. Oh, I thought I hit on you. So I'm using plastic stitch markers right now, but I see how they're actually like going through stitches. Like I have things marked off for one reason or another. So this is in crochet. That's why crochet needs to be able to attach to the fabric. Yep. Knitting is different though. Knitting, do you have a knitting one? I do. So here are my two knitting needles and I just take my marker with the jump ring on it and slide it right on to my needles. And then this hooks right between my stitches like that. So it's yeah. just there. So when I hit it, I know, well, in this case I'm purling, um, but so it just slides right onto your needle and around. So then how does it slide off? Because it's as you're knitting this stitch, it just so here's around my, yeah, here's my marker, right? And if I go ahead and I knit, Sorry, my yarn's a little tight. So if I knit, I'm just gonna knit all of these even though it's not what I'm supposed to do, that's okay. So if I knit these stitches, right, and I get up to my marker, I just slide it right on over to my next one and then keep on my way knitting. And then it just goes around my cord to the other side. And then if this were my last row, I would just take it off and put it aside. It's never actually like in the knitting, it's just riding on the needle. Whereas crochet, cool. it's, it's yeah. in the, it's like, so it has to be removable. Yeah. yeah, okay, so my, I'm definitely more of a crocheter than a knitter. And I've never used a stitch marker like that in knitting. And I think I just, I might be next leveling tonight. 
just <laughs> okay so <laughs> all of that aside so it's actually i'm glad that i grabbed um our jump ring mandrels um i have at least two at least three if not more ways of showing how to make jump rings um, and I think that if, if you guys will indulge me with a little bit of time, um, I want to show these things because now that I'm that now that I see how it's used, I want to show people that this is a thing that exists. So I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with the most complicated, I think, um, and then backtrack to the simplest. Usually you go the other way, but I, I've got this in my head right now. So let me switch my camera really quickly um, and then I'm going to show everybody these awesome tools. Caitlin, I don't even know if you know about these, but we have these jump ring mandrels and my camera, I set it up a little, a little differently than I usually do. I'm not sure I'm in love with how I have it, uh, but we're just going to go with it. Are you see seeing this right ways or backwards? We're seeing it correctly. Like the words are good. Okay. Everything's good. All right. I just like to double check because I see it mirrored, which is weird. I know there's a setting. So this, these are jump ring mandrels that you can use to make 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, or 16 millimeter jump rings. I think I just blew, Mar um, blew Marley's mind. Yeah, we'll be putting those in the mail to you later on today. Um, and then this one is four, six, seven, and eight. And I know that um, that is a vast range of knitting needles to be able to make jump rings to go around. So the way that this tool works is um, it comes when you when you take it out of the pack, there is this kind of key looking kind of device. And then your mandrel screws into the base. So no Allen wrench needed, thank goodness, right? <laughs> So for this, it's a very simple technique and I'm going to demonstrate it with 22. Am I gonna demonstrate it with 22 gauge wire? No, I'm gonna demonstrate it with 18 gauge wire because that's what you're gonna to wanna to use to make jump rings. Um, and this is a very, it's a very low tech, but very like, oh, that's smart kind of- Hey a, Meredith. Yes. Can you just explain why you're changing your wire to be something thicker? Yes, 100%. I, I apologize. Thank you, Caitlin, for, for reining me back into the, to the perhaps not beating, beating world. So you can see, just putting them side by side, the 18 gauge wire is thicker than the 22 gauge wire. And as Caitlin mentioned earlier, the, the bigger the number, the thinner the wire. So 22 gauge wire is going to be thinner and bendier than 18 gauge wire. And you might find after you've practiced a couple of times that 16 gauge wire is, is even better for you depending on, um, I'm kind of a rough knitter. <laughs> so <laughs> you might need something that's a little more robust um, in order to make sure that your jump rings are as durable as you would like them to be. Um, but let me show how the, how the tool works with the 18 gauge wire. And 18, 20 gauge wire is kind of a, a good place to start. Um, and then um, to adjust up and down. So let me show that a little bit better. There's a little hole here in the top of the tool and I'm just going to slide my wire in and anchor it on the back, okay? And I think I'm gonna bring my wire over to the front, take a little bit out of the spool. And again, just like um, before when we were working with the Contastic, my tool, my tools, my fingers are my best tools. So I'm going to use my index finger and my pointer, or I'm sorry, my index finger is my pointer finger and my thumb to hold that wire against the mandrel as I am turning it with my index finger here. So sometimes the simplest tools are the, um, are the best, right? So we're just winding this wire around and making some rings. And I think I chose the, oh, I don't know. I think this is probably the 12 or the 14 millimeter. So what size um, knitting needle would that be? I feel like that would be a pretty big knitting needle to be 14 millimeters. Yeah, I think I'm using an eight millimeter jump ring here as my biggest and it's fitting on my size 
what did we say these were a size nine so if okay. you think about yeah. it this way, like all of your knitting needles they come with our what our millimeter is and so yeah. You just want to make sure that whatever your jump ring is, it's a little bit bigger than what the actual size of your needle is. Because they don't, you don't want it to be the exact same because then it'll never fit. But you don't want it to be too but big. isn't, the millimeters are not a circumference. They're a diameter, correct? Correct. They are the inside diameter. Okay. For both knitting needles and the mandrels. I don't know about for the knitting needles, but I do know for the mandrels. And the, the wire will also um, spring back just a little bit because it's copper core wire, um, just by the nature of what wire does. So this is, this is sprung back a little bit, so it's loose on here. Oh, thanks, Angela. Um, Angela says she loves Beetle on products. So the important thing on all of the techniques that I'm going to show for making the um, the jump rings is how to cut them the proper way. So once again, when you're using your flush cutter, you wanna make sure that the flush side is toward the thing that you're cutting off. And then here, I'm just gonna slide this off. And now we get to clean it up. So I have this cute little coil here that's going to give me a lot of jump rings. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I like to cut them individually you could certainly kind of chomp your way through them and then fix them afterwards, but I like doing them one by one. So I'm just going to make sure I have a nice fresh cut here. And again, this wire is so inexpensive that um, wasting little tiny bits of it is better than trying to not waste any at all and then end up kind of ruining your whole project. So I have my first one cut. And I'm going to show that a couple more times. So this end, I don't know if we can see that that is, is um, pointy now. So I need to go with my flush side and make it flat. Did I make it flat? Of course, I left my glasses upstairs. Um, but I think I made that pretty flat. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually turning my tool over so that I am cutting this side, this next coil, flush so that two flush sides are now facing each other. So once again, I'm gonna put that one down. This one wasn't flush, right? Because it was the opposite side. So I need to trim that up, turn my tool and cut, okay? And then you just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, trimming up all of those jump rings. And if you mess one up, if one doesn't um, kind of work the way that you want it to, just go to the next one. So important next step in jump ring making. And I always, whenever I demonstrate with a class, I always make whatever I'm doing much bigger than it necessarily needs to be so that people can see. If I'm doing a, like a loomed project, I won't certainly won't use teeny tiny seed beads. I'll use much bigger seed beads than I necessarily would so everybody could see. Um, so now we have a great big jump ring. And I have two flat nose, we'll call them chain nose pliers, but they are flat. They aren't that round nose plier like Caitlin was showing before to make something round. You do not want to use your round nose pliers. You want to use something that's flat. I happen to have a bent chain nose plier and a flat nose plier here, but any anything that is has a flat side or flat inside, I should say, will do. Now, see there's this little little joint or a little split there. That's not going to do anybody any good, right? Because we don't want our, our yarn going through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until those ends meet up. And they'll make kind of a little clicking, almost like a grinding noise. That's how you know that they are met, that they have met up perfectly. And, and as you're wiggling back and forth, you are kind of pressing towards the joint or the hole so that they close up as you yep, wiggle, correct? 100%, yep. But I'm not pushing them together. I'm wiggling them. And as I'm wiggling them, I'm, I'm gently coaxing them <laughs> to come together. Okay, so that is the mandrel way of making jump rings. So next, I actually um, made up a... a Coil using the cone tastic, um, and Caitlin, you had mentioned like 
um, that you had made up a coil on the Quintastic and it wasn't quite, um, here, let me, I'll just kind of move, bend that out of, out of shape. So, oh, I messed, I messed my coil up, but it's not really, all hope is not lost because now I can turn this into jump rings. So I kind of messed up the first three. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of those. I don't need them, right? But I'm going, I can turn this coil into some jump rings using that same technique of moving my plier back and forth. So every time the jump rings are getting a flush cut, that's the thing that's most important. You wanna make sure that those jump rings have a nice flush cut so that they'll join up really nicely. So and I, I just wanna call out too, real quick, that there is a difference between a flush cutter and a cutter. Um, you can get jewelry cutters that are not flush cutters. So just make sure when you read the packaging or like, you know, you're looking at the beetle lines tools, make sure it says flush cutter. That's a really, really good point, Caitlin. Thank you. Um, and then let me just show that technique of moving them together again. So once again, I'm holding one on one side and one on the other and just kind of moving them together. And the way that you would open and close the jump ring in order to get that, um, that stitch marker on is you twist it, make sure I get a really good shot of what I'm doing. So you don't open it back and forth like this. You twist it either toward yourself or away from yourself. Slide that stitch marker on and then slide it back together. Okay, so that's the second way third way is using something called a bail making pliers. So these are my favorite. These are the stepped bail making pliers, but we also have bail making pliers that are not stepped. Um, if you're like, I only use this one certain kind of, um, this one certain size of knitting needle. And so I only need this size. Um, and these are great for a million different uses, but without digressing too much, I'm going to show how to make jump rings with them. And the same technique would apply with the stepped. You just get six different sizes here um, and then two sizes on these. Um, and all of these Beetalon products you can find at Beetalon.com. Um, and you can, you can buy stuff and we will send it to you and everybody, everybody wins. So the technique here is a little bit different. Let's see if I can get a good, good shot here. So um, the thing that I always encourage people to do whenever they're making any kind of jump rings is not to do, a, or any type of loop for that matter, don't over rotate your wrist all the way over. Um, Caitlin was showing when she was doing the, um, the wrap loop, you wanna just bend your wrist and then replace, um, I guess replace isn't the right word, reset it. So I'm really only bending my wrist this much. And each time I'm doing it, I'm re-gripping the wire. So I'm getting a nice loop or in a circle, I should say, but I'm not hurting my wrist. I'm not overextending it. I'm not, and I'm also not wrapping the wire around like this because that is not going to make for a nice jump ring. You wanna make sure that you um, just kind of hold and twist and then you get these jump rings. And I think this is, oh gosh, I don't know. I never, I never remember off the top of my head. I think that this is maybe an eight millimeter or a nine millimeter right here. Um, but again, everything can be found, all the information you can find on the Beetle and website. So again, same technique. We make sure that we have our flush cut and I like to start um, from the bottom. No, this, these I'm, I'm doing the opposite way. But you just wanna make sure that you're, flush, you're doing flush cut to flush cut and then always Make, sh make sure that you are flipping your pliers or your cutters so that you're doing flush cut to flush cut. And then the last way that I will show is even simpler, which is using your round nose pliers. So maybe um, you love making those little knotted head pins like Caitlin was showing. Um, and you went out and you purchased 
a brown nose player. Well, these guys can be used for all kinds of different things, including and not limited to making jump rings. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit the same, but a little bit different because it does have a tapered, um, a tapered jaw. So it's going to be more like using the contastic rather than using something that's a mandrel. So you're gonna get a bunch of different sizes, but maybe you only need one size. You only really need to, to um, wrap your wire, or not to wrap your wire, but to bend your wire around a couple of times. You don't need to go all the way down, right? So we hold the wire just like we were, were if we were making a, um, a loop down here in the bottom. You don't really need to, it just kind of makes it a little bit easier. And again, I'm just rotating my wrist a little bit. I'm not over rotating just enough to, um, to wrap that wire around my round nose pliers so that I can have, and in this case, because these are very fine, these jaws, we do have other tools, um, other round nose pliers where the jaws are a little bit, um, a little bit thicker. These are also pretty thin. Um, I like using really thin jaws, which is why down here in the Beetle on Studio, that's mostly what we have. But same thing, and these are our little teeny tiny jump rings. But same thing, we have a, a little coil, and we're just going to cut them up. And now I feel like I need to make a ton of stitch markers since I have all of these jump rings cut. And sometimes you're, you're gonna go through, I'm glad that that actually happened to show you. Sometimes you're gonna go through more than one um, at a time when you're doing your cut. And that's okay. You can, sometimes you can fix it or otherwise just move along. The important thing is just to make sure that each side is flush each time. And I think that those were all of the ways that I wanted to show doing the jump rings, that's a lot of the jump rings. Now I have to attach a lot of things to a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah, and I love to though, have the jump rings. You can kind of just sit there and be in front of the TV and you know work the jump rings and cut them. And it's not a big production. Like you just sit there and do it. And plus like using the stepped bale pliers, which I love these. <laughs> like I feel like everybody needs these. I like these because you have all the different sizes and I can sit there and literally make two jump rings if I have two stitch markers. Like I don't need to do the jump ring mandrel and do 500 jump rings. I mean, I can if I want to and I'm not doing anything else, but you have the option of using some of the other tools just to get one or two for whatever project you're on. Cause it never fails, you always need a jump ring. Okay. Well, and I also, I love these techniques also, Caitlin, we, we haven't mentioned it yet, but for gifts. I yeah. Mean, if you, for, for crafty people, there are, there are an almost limitless number of tools and, and books and fun things and skeins and patterns and everything. But stitch markers, I feel like is something, right? That every, you can never have too many. No, you never can. And it's always nice to get handmade ones because it's something unique that you're not gonna find anywhere else. So, okay. Before we do anything else, we have to stop and announce, we have a giveaway. <laughs> you have a giveaway. I forgot about that. So we're super duper excited. excited that we're going to give away some tools and wire from Beetle On so that you can make your own jump rings. We're so excited. So in the comments, go ahead and write, um, what should we have them comment, Meredith? Beetle On? Let's say, uh, Hold on. let's let them know. Oh. They have to, if you're watching live right now, we're going to give a comment or we're going to give something away to a live listener. Mm -hmm. So then don't worry. There's going to be a chance for those of you who are catching this on the replay too. So don't, don't fret. <laughs> those of you who are listening live, get over to your live chat, open it up, tell your boss, you need a potty break, go to the back. <laughs> let's make this happen. Um, so we're going to give a prize away live and we're going to do that. How? by putting a comment and what are we going to say Meredith? Uh, let's just say Beetle on. I like okay, it. So put yeah. Beetle on as your comment and that'll enter you to win. We'll let you have a minute or two to comment and we'll pick a live winner. And then we are so grateful that Beetle on is giving us 
two prizes to give away. So we will be able to do a comment winner as well. So when that blog post is posted after this video today, you'll have about two weeks or so to go ahead and enter there. Um, and what did I say we were giving away? Whatever it is that I texted you, that's what we'll give away. Okay, I'll have to look again. I know we're giving away <laughs> and I think. Wire and Contastic and a jump ring maker, I think. I think so. Yeah. Oh, look, we've got a lot of beetle-ons. As they're going through, did you guys see the um, the comments? Somebody said that they could see a stitch marker exchange coming up. What a fun idea, right? Well, they do have stitch marker exchanges at like the big um, stitch or uh, yarn events um, that you take your stitch markers and you can trade with other people, but we're not- I love that. Here. So maybe we'll have to come up with something fun. I love that idea. See, I'm like, I know enough to be dangerous, but I didn't know that that was like a thing. I love that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's a lot of people that will make stitch markers. I mean, just for the event, cause they look so forward to it and they wear them around. Like they have a big, like something or other around, like it's jewelry. And then all the stitch markers are on there and then they exchange. It's kind of fun. That's, really I fun. love that. That's really so, nice. For That's clarification, really cool. um, there will be a separate, uh, blog post than the original one because yes. I know people are going to go to the original one and want to leave a comment there so I just want to make it clear where will they be able to find the link so that way they have a chance to win later on in the comments you will go to the original blog post you will look for today's date where we talk about the contastic markers and later today there will be a link there click on that link to the blog post that's all about just these stitch markers and that's where you can enter to win for the beetle on prize Okay, so I'm I'm there right now and I don't see the links for the other. Are there links for the other ones that we've done already or no? There should be for the past two. All right, maybe I'm not looking in the right place. I'll, I'll double check it. I'll make sure they're all linked properly. Okay, because maybe I'll... it didn't save. Okay, just I just want to be clear because I know people are going to ask. So that I was... will fix it for everybody. That was all. <laughs> um, all right, so people are leaving all sorts of comments. I mean, they're leaving all sorts of comments. You wanna tell me, I'm gonna scroll up and down. You tell me when to stop, Meredith, and that person oh. will be the lucky winner. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. I know, it really is. Okay. All right. Are you doing it? Yep, I. you want me to stop? I stopped. Like, okay, yeah, 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 when I said yeah. Okay, so that is Becky Barrington. Becky Barrington. So I'm going to put on here. Hey, Becky. Um, where do you want Becky to leave a mess or send you a message to the Yarn Thing podcast winner? Yeah, just send it there and then I'll get it over to Meredith when we have both winners and stuff. So oh, she can have it. Congrats. Please email us winner at yarnthingpodcast.com. Okay. So Becky, that's what you're going to do. You're going to email us in the subject line. Let us know you won from today's contest. Uh, what information do you need from her, Caitlin? I think we just need her mailing address. Probably phone number doesn't hurt, right? Sure. Right. So there you go. That's it. All right. And so then if they want a chance to win a prize, you're going to leave a comment on the blog post, which... Uh, the link to that will be found in the DIY stitch marker event page. And I'll um, put it in the description here as well when this video is done perfect. being live. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. That works. I love it. Meredith, I love having you here. It's always so much fun. Thank you guys so much. This like, this just made my day. We lost power in Pennsylvania. So my last night, or not in Pennsylvania, where I live in Pennsylvania, um, 3,006, not 3,007, but 3,006 homes in my area lost power. And so last night was a little rough. This morning was a little rough. And this just like turned my whole day around. I oh, love yeah. hanging out. I always say I love hanging out with people who like doing what I do. And it's just, it's so refreshing to be able to talk the talk with people who, who are in the know. So I, I love, and I love that we've become friends over the years from doing this too. It's, it's amazing. I love totally. it. Oh, a little, a little bit of I feel the same way. I'm just like, like when she told me you were coming, I was like, oh, that's so cool. I'm so excited. So I was very thrilled to have you here. This is so much fun. Um, I'm loving the stitch marker event. Uh, from what I can see online, a lot of other people are enjoying this event. So it was a great idea, Caitlin. I am loving this so much. We posed this question, question in yesterday's broadcast, but we would love to know if this is an event that you would like to see maybe annually. And if so, 
would you like to be able to purchase essentially kits for each day of the event, whether it would be just the, the wire and the beads or including all the tools that we're talking about, like, what is it that you would like to see? And for your response for that, please leave a comment in the video or below the video description box. You'll see that it says leave comment here or something like that on YouTube. We would love to know if you would be interested in purchasing kits for things like this. So that way, when you're watching the live videos with us, you can actually work along with us because you have all the tools ready at hand. Um, doing something like that is not easy, which is why it's really important. You let us know if it's something you're interested in because I mean, I'm just going to be brutally honest. Caitlin and I are super busy and we don't want to spend a lot of time putting something together that you guys really don't want. I mean, that's not a useful bit of our time at all. So we want to make sure we're giving you what you want. Um, so let us know if this is something you would like to do or um, I know, Caitlin, we talked about doing like an advent calendar sort of thing with stitch markers. And I think that would be fun too. I mean, this just, it's just a whole nother way to look at, at our craft and bring in other stuff. And I just, I love doing it. It's, it's a great time. So make sure you leave a comment below, make sure you have hit that like button, hit subscribe. And if you have not already go check out the beat along Facebook page. I know that they do Facebook lives. Um, do you have a YouTube channel? Like where else can they find more about you Meredith? So we, we, we have a lot of um, videos on YouTube. We don't do our, our lives on YouTube, um, but if you want to learn pretty much any of the techniques that we talked about today, if you go to, to the Beetle on YouTube channel, um, projects and techniques and fun stuff and all kinds of things about the company are there. I do a Facebook Live every Thursday at two o'clock PM Eastern time. Um, so tomorrow I, we're actually doing some loom work. So that'll be really fun. Um, Juliana uh, Avalar is going to be my guest. You know, Juliana, um, she's going to be my guest. Um, and we're going to do a bunch of loom things for that. Um, so yeah, every Thursday at two o'clock PM Eastern time, I teach a project or a technique, or we just kind of hang out and have some fun. Marley and Caitlin have both been on that Facebook live. Um, and let's, let's get one, another one on the calendar. I always like having something to look forward to with you guys. Dude, so let's, soon, let's make that happen. <laughs> as soon as all this COVID stuff goes away, let's totally make that happen. Um, I love that you do those Facebook lives because as I mentioned, I buy all the tools and then I watch your lives and I get to see how to use them. Or I see the fun thing things that I'm like, Caitlin, you got to show me how to make that. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's just guys, you're, you just, you just got to do it. They're just so much fun. They're so much fun. And you learn so many cool tricks and tips and, um, yeah, it's, it's fun. So there you have it. Cool. Well, hopefully people will go check out Beatalon. And now next time they're at Michael's or Joanne's or wherever, and they see Beatalon products, they're going to be like, I know them. And that'll be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> For All sure. right, so are we back here tomorrow, Caitlin? Oh, you're on mute, my friend. Sorry, you muted I'm, me. I'm um, sorry. Tomorrow we are back. We are here at noon Eastern and we're gonna be doing polymer clay. Ooh. Fun. What time is that? I wanna, I wanna do that. Noon Eastern. Nice, all right, I'll be there. <laughs> Where can I get polymer clay so that I'm ready for that? Michael's. Do they sell it? I mean, that's that's an aisle I have not been down. So. <laughs> it's a very small section usually, but you can get it at Michael's. You can get it at Joann's. Um, you're going to need at least two colors of polymer clay for tomorrow and pick up some wire if you don't already have it because we'll need it. Um, for what part kind of, of wire? Okay, then. Pardon me? What kind of wire? Um, I'm using 20 gauge wire. Okay. 20 gauge like artistic wire? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. When you say wire to someone who works for Beadalon, it's like, well, yes, <laughs> you have to be a little more like saying yarn to a knitter. Pick up some yarn. What, exactly. what kind? <laughs> like, uh, there's a lot of variation there. Cool. So we'll be ready for that. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for everything today. I really appreciate it. And everybody else, I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.